Yeah, welcome once again. Uh, can somebody please lead us with the word of prayer? Prabhakar, could you please lead us if it's okay? Yes, Pastor, sure. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we acknowledge your holy name, Father. At this moment, we come unto your throne of praise, Father. We dedicate ourselves completely and surrender ourselves completely so that, Father, we can gain the insights and knowledge uh, and and all the things which you want us to learn, Father. Uh, thank you. Oh, oh, lead Father, uh, Pastor Nancy uh, as well, Father, so that we can um, go together hand by hand and, and get what you want us to get. Uh, thank you. And uh, I dedicate each members, team members and, and students so that everyone shall get in enlightenment and by the grace of God and the wisdom of your power. Thank you, Father. Lead us in your own way. I dedicate each and every one. Once again, I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Prabhakar. Today's uh, class is a very important class because we will be moving on to the practical aspect flowing. in the simple gift before we get into that which is in in our notes uh, this is from uh, let me quickly back up a little bit and uh, touch on the practical instructions for prophetic worship because i remember the last class we had left this out so we said that god is able to give us songs uh, he gives us the words as well as the music uh, in the now for us to worship him with it we also saw how some songs are for the encouragement or exhortation of the people so in different categories uh, there are songs that the lord can release to us and we can sing these songs and the power of god will be uh, you know sort of unleashed on God's people as we uh, express through these songs. Then, for those who are leading in this form of prophetic worship, there are some guidelines that will help them flow in the prophetic easier. Okay, so what are these guidelines? The first one is preparation. When we talk about preparation, uh, worship leaders, it would be helpful, worship leaders, worship team, it would be helpful if they are prepared, not just musically, but also spiritually. So if they spend time in the word, if they spend time in prayer, you know, they uh, can maintain a very sensitive spirit towards God because through... Uh, uh, these disciplines what we are doing is we are opening ourselves up to god so the more tuned in you are to the spirit of god the word of god the easier to discern what god is saying or doing in those moments so anyone who is engaged in uh, leading others in worship it's good to build ourselves up spiritually and keep ourselves sensitive spiritually at all times the other aspect of the spiritual preparation is uh, a rich deposit of the word of God in the heart of uh, the person who is leading. The reason why this is important is simply because when God releases a word, it goes through a process within us for us to identify what is really coming from God and uh, what part of that could just be you know a natural encouragement that you and i would want to bring to the people so having a rich deposit of the word of god in our hearts is helpful to uh, to discern it's helpful to identify and recognize what is really coming from god so someone who's well-versed in the word of God can flow faster in the prophetic because you know that that process happens faster within them but let's say one doesn't know the word very well uh, that can be problematic now if initially uh, uh, someone who's called into the uh, 
uh, worship ministry is not very well versed in the word, there can be a learning curve. You know, we can expect that individual to grow and eventually get stronger in the word and come to a place where they, uh, <coughs> excuse me, are quick to, uh, or rather quicker to discern what God is speaking. So one must train themselves, you know, being strong in the word is not just left to uh, somebody who's in the teaching ministry. Everyone needs to be strong in the word. Um, and uh, since we're talking about somebody leading in prophetic worship, uh, it is a requirement for them to be strong in the word of God. Now, the next thing is a sense of expectation. And this is to do with expecting to hear from God. Generally, a worship leader could um, come up with a set of songs for the worship session. Now, while preparing the list, so one could still tune into the spirit of God and uh, discern what the right words would be or right songs would be for that particular session. So, you know, you, you, you hear from God when you are preparing for the given session and even during the session you know it's important to be open sometimes there are uh, words that the lord may give during the the session itself that you may want to sing over the people or uh, for a musician you know, god's spirit might be working through a musician on the team and releasing some tunes so that person would need to be sensitive to what God is doing and release that. And for the worship leader, the worship leader needs to be sensitive that, oh, right now it's a tune or some music that is prophetic uh, that needs to be released. So let the musician play. You know, so uh, this kind of expectation that God will work with us and through us during this session is uh, very, very important. And I was just listening to a particular songwriter and she was telling me that at the end of a certain session, she heard uh, a, a few words. And those words stuck with her. She never uh, sang those songs, uh, uh, you know, in, in that time, but she carried those words in her spirit she went back and during her prayer times and seeking time, seeking the Lord, uh, she kind of placed those words before the Lord and then came an entire song out of those few words. So you see, there is a need to expect. And if the Lord has called us for this sort of a ministry, leading people in worship, then we need to expect, okay, God, what words are you giving me? What music are you giving me? Uh, and uh, the now word of the Lord, you know, brings that power. And we've discussed all the impact that the prophetic song can have on the lives of the people. So expect from God. Sensitivity is another thing. Uh, I've already shared that with us, that we have to be sensitive to the spirit of God. So a couple of things uh, for us uh, in order to maintain the sensitivity. We need a focus. It's very easy to get distracted when, you know, any, any form of ministry for that matter, we can get distracted by our own thoughts. Uh, when it comes to worship, maybe, you know, the, the uh, thought of performing well, being applauded by people, you know, these, these sort of thoughts can, uh, distract us and yet you know, a worship leader if uh, the individual can be sensitive instead to what God is saying and doing uh, in that time that will be very powerful so prevent oneself from being distracted so that means again I think praying knowing your motives of why you are doing this, all of those things really help to study uh, from scripture. Okay, what is worship? How to lead worship? What are some of the principles that uh, I should have? So it all sort of clears our uh, intention when we are doing what we are 
doing so to not uh, have that you know that uh, attitude of performance or pride when we are leading people in worship so that uh, really helps the other thing as i told us is when we maintain that sensitivity you're careful about giving time to god and the spirit of god so whether it is the worship leader singing uh, certain lines or it, another uh, vocalist on your team singing certain lines that are prophetic or a musician playing prophetic music everyone is sensitive so it also helps as a team to pray together to practice together to sense the work of the spirit together you know, these kind of sessions can be had earlier um, it's not new like you get on the stage and everyone the whole team is used to hearing from god and supporting one another uh, as the spirit of god is working through them so uh, you know all of these things really help so maintain that sensitivity to the work of the spirit and uh, talking about the team that is uh, flowing together uh, these days we have uh, not just the singers but you also have the media presentation team so somebody could be uh, projecting the lyrics or uh, through a ppt and all that so even that team if they are aware that god can speak in the now uh, that person will also be sensitive to pick up the words and maybe quickly key in, key in maybe uh, you know when when the lord works through us and some new words flow it may not be in the uh, already you know set of songs in our uh, easy worship or some other software so suddenly you're like oh this is a new song this is a new line so the media presentation team can quickly type it out for the audience and they can sing along worship along so uh, to be sensitive everyone to be sensitive to what the lord is doing do, during those moments of worship becomes very very important so uh, with that i think i will uh, stop about prophetic song and worship uh, and I, i'm sure uh, all of us have heard uh, you know testimonies of songwriters and how each one had the song flow out of them in certain moments uh, you know i raise a hallelujah if you've heard uh, that that song from bethel that uh, there was a little boy who was very sick and uh, uh, you know he was going in for uh, treatment and at one point when his health was in a very critical condition the person who wrote this song i raise a hallelujah he heard that that boy is sick and these words came out of his spirit you know i raise a hallelujah it was like a battle cry uh, at that time and uh, that's how the song came about it's a prophetic song so uh, there are many such testimonies you know i've heard uh, some uh, hindi songwriter from from our nation um, uh, in fact i heard him say i just mentioned the name sheldon bangera he Uh, talked about how uh, there was a time when he was riding his bike and he he got the the music to a particular song and he quickly stopped the bike and he recorded that uh, you know on his phone and then he kind of went back and built on that song so you know uh, we talked about being sensitive during the session of worship but look at this people are sensitive uh, in life and uh, songs flow out of us just at the moment that you least expect god releases those words into our spirit we pick it up and uh, you know there come songs that bless the body of christ so to remain expectant sensitive and preparation preparation spiritual preparation also you know i didn't uh, touch on this but skill because sometimes um, the the tune that one has to sing could be beyond the range that they are used to now if that person is very skillful they can accommodate it similarly for a musician uh, it could be something away from the common uh, range that the musician plays it but here's a tune from heaven if they are skillful they can accommodate it so being skillful um, you know in in your natural giftings as well is very very important for a prophetic singer or a musician so i'm just stopping with that any questions um, we can answer them and then move on to the next chapter
all right so yeah i think uh, it's uh, quite clear let's pray that uh, even as the time goes by and we've talked about uh, david's tabernacle isn't it and god said that he will rebuild that uh, tabernacle of david uh, so we are going to see many new songs released you know in scripture we encourage a new song new song so let's pray let's pray uh, let's uh, trust god for new songs to be released in the body of christ that will be so appropriate for the season refreshing and strengthening us and you know bringing us um, higher in our worship of god okay so the next chapter here is about activating the prophetic gift so so far we have built a, a strong foundation about the prophetic gift and the prophetic anointing uh, now we will build on it uh, in a more practical way so now we are talking about activating the gift of prophecy within ourselves so uh, those of us who are waiting for this moment like ma'am enough theory uh, let's just jump into the practice of the prophetic anointing you know this is it now we are moving into uh, more of exercising this gift so chapter 8 i talks about activating the gift of prophecy and again i've been saying that for all believers the way we are built up in the prophetic is to go from the simple gift of prophecy to you know a uh, prophetic ministry if god has that for us and those of us who are called into the prophetic office move on to the higher um calling of ministering as a prophet but everyone starts with the simple gift of prophecy thereby this is applicable to everybody okay all of us can flow in the simple gift of prophecy now going back to our key passage from 1st corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 11 we've read that in uh, uh, some of our earlier sessions i won't be reading through the entire passage but what we understood there is that there are diversities of gifts but one holy spirit who supplies all these gifts to the believers and the manifestation of the uh, holy spirit is in the form of there are nine gifts that are listed in this passage so there's a mention of the word of knowledge there is a mention of faith by the same spirit there's a mention of gifts of healings working of miracles prophecy discerning of spirits tongues interpretation of tongues and we uh, learn that the holy spirit is the one who is distributing to each person and you no know, it ends uh, by saying as he wills now there is a uh, a little bit of clarity that we need to bring into this passage and the understanding of the working of spiritual gifts before we move on to um, more direct you know activating the gift sort of uh, topics so the the clarity here is that every believer can manifest all the nine gifts of the spirit so that's the statement that we are making that all believers or every believer can manifest all the nine gifts of the spirit sometimes uh we we settle with the idea that some believers can manifest or maybe some uh, believers in leadership can manifest the gifts of the spirit and we also think that not all nine gifts a few gifts will be manifested okay so that is the idea that uh, you know many people carry now why are we saying that every believer can manifest and all nine gifts of the holy spirit first reason is the gifts belong to the holy spirit okay the gifts belong to the holy spirit and he is the one who is working in the believer to manifest these gifts now let's look at a couple of verses when we begin with first corinthians chapter 12 okay the list of the gifts is given there and although it says the spirit as he wills if you go 
to verse 31 of that same chapter, it says, earnestly desire the best gifts. Earnestly desire the best gifts. So what is God saying? You know, God is encouraging every believer to desire the best gift. So God would not ask us to desire something if it was not uh, to be given to us. Now, what is the best gift? The way we understand this is in a given situation, you know, whatever ministers to the individual would be the best gift. Now, if somebody is sick, okay, if someone is sick, what would be uh, the best gift to be given to that person? Okay, healing. Shri Kumar uh, said healing. That's right. So the gifts of healings is appropriate. Now, if somebody is discouraged, what could be the best gift among the gifts of the spirit? Encouragement. Okay, great. So Anita, encouragement through the gifts of the spirit, which, which gift will you pick? Prophecy. Okay. So Abhishek has uh, answered that question. Prophecy would be the best gift. Okay. Let's say uh, it, it's a very difficult situation that a person is in, and uh, they, you know, they need that strength from God to make a move. What would be a best best gift? Okay, uh, I think uh, word of wisdom. Maybe Shrikumar has answered my earlier question. But now I'm asking, in a difficult situation, uh, somebody needs the strength to make the move that God is telling them to, to make. What would be a good gift? You can look at your list of gifts. Gift of faith. Ah, that's right. Yes, yes, Mangi. Gift of faith. Okay, Because uh, you need that faith to be able to uh, take that next step. So now we understand what the best gift is, whatever is required in that moment to minister, that is the best gift. So in a given situation, a believer can desire, honestly desire the best gift. God, right now this person is discouraged. Help me flow in prophecy or the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, right? And it happens. Maybe we are in uh, the ministry of deliverance and we have to cast out a demon. Again, we could say, Lord, I desire to flow uh, in the word of knowledge. You know, what exactly happened? Why is this person bound? Or the discerning of spirits. What are the demonic spirits operating right now? So those would be the best gifts. Now, if I am by myself individually, uh, what would be the best gift? From this list, if you could tell me. I want to minister to myself. Okay, Anita says dreams. Uh, from the gifts of the spirit, Anita. From 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 12. Tongues. Okay, Susan and Prabhakar have uh, typed tongues. That's true. So tongues, once again, there are different types of tongues. The basic gift of tongues is the one that is given for our personal edification. First Corinthians 14, 2 says that we speak mysteries unto God. And Jude 1, 21 says you're building yourself up in your most holy faith, you know, uh, praying in the spirit. So the normal basic tongues edifies and strengthens the believer. And Paul writes about it. He says, I speak in, in an unknown tongue much more than all of you. So he exercised the gift of tongues as well uh, to a very large extent. So when I am by myself, I would pick the gift of tongues to minister to my own spirit. So the best gift simply means the gift appropriate for the moment. Okay, so we understood that also. Uh, Moving on, 
when we start with uh, yeah when we start with first corinthians 14 verse 1 he you know paul said okay honestly desire the best gift and then he talks about love now the chapter and verse classification there uh, has been done for the convenience of the reader now when we know that when paul wrote it he didn't write first corinthians 12 and then okay now i'm going to write first corinthians 13 no it was a flow it was a letter that he wrote and it was flowing so he was talking to the believers as a collective audience and he told everyone pursue the best gift and you know especially that you may uh, prophesy oh, oh sorry uh first corinthians 12 31 he said honestly desire the best gift and then he talks to all the believers about love, you know, about how love should be the basis uh, of the practice of the spiritual gifts. Now, moving on to 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1, he says there, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Now, once again, the question before us is, who is the audience? So far, he's been talking to everybody all the believers at the church of corinth and he says in one breath pursue love so to whom is he saying pursue love to all the believers now how can he suddenly switch to a small section of the audience and only tell them now everyone pursue love but only some of you pursue desire spiritual gifts especially that you prophesy you know, it would not be um, uh, logical of me to conclude that way. You know, when he's talking to the entire audience, that whole sentence is applicable to the entire audience. So he's telling all the believers, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So he's telling everybody, everyone please desire that you may prophesy. Okay. So that again gives us clarity there if the command to pursue love is for all believers then you must apply desire spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy apply that to all believers also okay so all believers are to desire spiritual gifts but especially that we may prophesy and that is very scriptural now, I told you that we need some clarity before we go further. When we look at another passage, 1 Corinthians 12, over there, again, there is a, a, a list of uh, uh, gifts that are mentioned. And the, the language that Paul used is, he, he says, like, for to one is given, you know, and for and to the other, like, one is given. So he he speaks in that manner and based on that and also first corinthians 12 11 that verse also says but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills remember that passage we talked of earlier it ended with as he wills now based on this uh some interpret that the decision of which gift will operate through you know a particular individual is left to the discretion of the holy spirit so uh, the believer can't desire okay but when we've already understood the meaning of the best gift and you know what he wills what would the spirit of god will he would will the flow of the best gift for the moment it doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is withholding certain gifts and only releasing, you know, okay, uh, John, you get only two gifts, you work with that. And, you know, Paul, you get only three gifts, you work with that. As he wills, he does not restrict and limit the, uh, the, the delivery of the gifts through the believers. Now, that's not the point because we've already seen that the instruction to pursue love and honestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that one may prophesy, is applicable to 
all believers so what is the meaning of as he wills it simply means appropriate for that moment okay and one more thing that uh, you know i just want to point out here is when we read uh, first corinthians 14 um paul lays there instructions for the practice of the gifts of the spirit and in that in that um set of instruction he he mentions to the believers you know if you all want to prophesy prophesy one by one one by one so such that giving an opportunity for everyone who has a word to share the word but do it in a proper way because in first corinthians 14 you know he has other instructions also he has instructions about uh, only if you have an interpretation for for tongues only then you you speak in tongues in in the church okay so um, and different things or women you know for for the cultural context he tells the women okay be silent so he says be silent be silent a couple of times all the instructions are put into first corinthians 14 for the orderly and decent operation of the gifts of the spirit okay and even in those instructions we see paul writing to the believers and saying if you have a word to share everyone prophesy one by one like don't don't all speak together and create commo- commotion because the word will not be clear how would one receive it and work with it so there is a way in which you must deliver the prophetic word so i hope this gives us clarity on the fact that every believer can flow in all the nine gifts of the spirit so let me pause right now if there are you know questions doubts more clarity uh, that we require we can discuss and then i will move on to other points here Uh, yes thank you pastor yeah please go ahead pastor as you said um, uh, a desire for the gifts of the spirit mm. uh, my question is this um, like um, we all can have the general uh, gift of the uh, prophet prophetic so how i can able to know that my office of a prophet and um, and uh, and and based on that knowledge i grow in that prophetic um, you know um, office and uh, how i can able to distinguish between these two things like it's a, am i a prophet or you know am i called as an apost uh, what is it in the office of a prophet or mm-hmm. the gift of prophecy which is working in me mm-hmm. is it a general gift so that's okay. my question thank you professor okay so you are asking that uh, any believer how would they know if they are called into prophetic ministry oh, yes absolutely or... as a, as a, as a prophet as a prophet because uh, as we as we know that uh, you know we all can generally be as the as we desire and we can move in the prophetic but how can i uh, how someone can distinguish like uh, how can he he know that yes i am called as a prophet because uh in that flow of the prophecy is anyway in a general gift also moving and uh, but how can he distinguish or he may because of that gift of prophecy he can go as an evangelist or uh, sometimes some people take a decision and move as a pastor but uh, maybe he is not a pastor but they take a, but because of the desire to serve the god they can end up in uh, you know uh, doing a ministry as a pastor but uh, maybe they are not called as a pastor but they are called as a prophet so how can we come out from uh, from this kind of uh, you know confusions or dilemma uh, and uh, how can we know that you know this flow what i am having or this gift i am having it is god has given me uh, to be a prophet uh, for the church or the prophet for the nation how can we know that uh, i just want to know. thank you pastor yeah yeah very uh, pertinent question there so shri kumar uh, two ways one is again through the prophetic word god can reveal 
that a certain person is called to the prophetic ministry or the prophetic office so i can know that okay this is the journey that i'm making yes i have started off with uh, flowing in the simple gift of prophecy but i know what god is calling me for so that is one way god can already reveal it now the other way and that would be the better way is everyone flows in the simple gift of prophecy and you keep doing your best because earnestly desire means uh, we are really wanting this to happen we are really wanting the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit to happen and we also see uh, in first uh, corinthians 14 26 where uh, paul says let all things be done for edification so with the desire that i want to build the body of christ strengthen you know edify the body of christ um encourage the believers i am pursuing the gifts more and more and as i'm doing this the what will happen is i will begin to make progress in the this particular gifting the prophetic gifting and it is good as my prophetic gift grows for me to keep practicing it in the right manner with the right motives uh, and maybe, maybe I go from being a prophesying believer to being in the prophetic ministry. And who knows, you know, maybe I'm called to the prophetic office. People will begin to recognize it. Before you put, I am prophet, so and so, people will begin to tell you that we can see this gift flowing out of your life. We think, and even you know, the leadership and uh, people that you respect in the ministry, they themselves would affirm and say, I think you're called to the office of the prophet. And people start to call you as one in the prophetic ministry or one called to the prophetic office. That would be a better way. You know, once the gift is demonstrated from our lives, uh, and you know, God has sort of put that. Uh, on your life and given clarity to people around you uh, through the manifestation of the gift then when you know the time is appropriate and people begin to recognize that gift over your life and say okay so and so is called to the prophetic ministry or called to the prophetic office or they begin to call you a prophet that would be a better way of knowing that hey this is my this is the area where God wants me to serve him. So I hope I've answered your question. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, move on then. So now, uh, you know, we have, I, I'm hoping that, you know, we have clarity because there are no questions yet. Uh, so let's move on to uh, practical aspects about the gift of prophecy. Okay, and I'm talking about the basic gift of prophecy here or simple gift of prophecy. Uh, firstly, prophetic gift or any gift in us spiritual gift needs to be stirred up okay uh, we see paul writing to timothy in first timothy 4 14 he tells him do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership and then now again, 2 Timothy 1.6, he exhorts him and says, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So here is an instruction to stir up the gifts. It can be all the gifts. Um, and since we're talking about prophecy, you know, we, we are focusing on prophecy. So you can stir up the gift of prophecy but here's the other the flip side we can also neglect the gift of prophecy now what did paul want timothy to understand basically he wanted timothy to understand that if you have a gift you have to make it shine okay, if you just put it in the uh, closet uh, cupboard or shelf and just close it it'll gather dust it'll be a dormant gift in us and it will not be useful for the body of Christ. However, if we take that gift and we use it, we stir it up, we rekindle the fire and work with it, 
No, then it begins to manifest. Then it begins to work for the kingdom of God. So bottom line, stir up the gift. Use it. How do we do this? You know, there are a couple of things. Um, there's no uh, scripture and verse for this. But you know, sometimes just praying in tongues, it, it does something within us where you begin to see the release of the gifts of the spirit in an easier way. So when we are going to minister someplace and uh, you really need to depend, you, you really depend on the gifts of the spirit. One of the things that uh, you and I could do is to just pray in tongues. And of course, the, the good part is you can pray under your breath. You know, you don't really have to be loud and nobody even needs to know that you've been preparing yourself in this manner, praying in the spirit, but the, the gifts get stirred in you. And then starts the flow of the gifts of the spirit. It's something that you could um, uh, pray and and observe yourself that there's a there's a release, a faster release of the gifts of the spirit. The second way to stir up the gifts is to flow in it. So uh, a lot of believers, what they end up doing is they say, "I'm not so accurate." Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I don't feel very confident. Uh, I know God is telling me this, but I'm not sure. So, okay, I won't say it, you know. So you're not using it. The moment you stop using the gift, that's when it starts gathering dust and becomes dormant in us. So using the gift is very important. And we will come to how to use it appropriately later. But put it into practice, the gift of prophecy. The more you prophesy, I think the other day I shared with all of us, right, that I really struggled to, to real flow in the gift of prophecy. Um, and it took me several classes, weekend schools that I've attended, you know, studying what I'm teaching you right now, again and again and again and again and trusting God little by little, little by little, every word that I get, okay, I need to release that word. I need to be confident overcome my own self-doubt. So put it to work. So when you put it to work, it begins to get activated. So stir up the gift in us. So that is one way in which you begin to release the gift of prophecy. I'm just going to go with the content here. If you need to ask a question, then just uh, unmute yourself and stop me and please ask. Okay, next uh, uh, thought here is spiritual gifts can be activated and imparted so we already saw how paul said you know, there are gifts in you by the laying on of hands so something it's a spiritual dynamic how did the gift go into timothy we know that the gifts are from god only god can do it but when one is praying god can take a certain anointing over a person and put it on another person Okay, so impartation is something we see in scripture. Yeah, and of course, once there is an impartation in us, uh, those gifts need to be activated. We also see Paul writing to the Romans in Romans 1.11. He says, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. So is it possible that one had no gift for something and, you know, uh, because of impartation, now they have a deposit of the gift which did not exist earlier. Yes, it can happen. Okay, So impartation is very biblical. Or we've talked about the transfer of the anointing. Okay. Uh, so transfer of the anointing can happen. Now, we've also understood that the entire anointing doesn't get transferred. So depending on the calling of the individual, uh, parts of the anointing can be imparted. And we must always remember that the gift is in us in, its, in a certain form, but we are responsible to grow that gift. In other words, to mature that gift and uh, when it comes to the prophetic gift, you know, to become more accurate, become more effective in the usage of the prophetic gift. The next thought here is that we 
need faith for the release of the gifts of the spirit romans 12 6 paul teaches us he says having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith and then he goes on to list you know, some of the other gifts now these are all we call them grace gifts okay so prophecy is also included in that and that is why we said that someone could have a prophetic ministry which is a grace gift of prophecy everyone can have simple gift of prophecy but some can have grace gift of prophecy meaning they have a prophetic ministry now this scripture is paul says prophesy in proportion to our faith so if there is some faith there can be some prophecy if there is more faith for prophecy there can be the release of prophecy to a greater extent now what if there's a lot of faith there can be a lot of prophetic anointing flowing through a person and expressed through you could say prophetic word prophetic power prophetic uh, worship prophetic intercession but what is the ingredient or the prerequisite there faith so would it be all right to say that if there is no faith there will be no flow of the prophetic correct if i lack faith then i will not be able to release the gift in fact all gifts of the spirit are activated or released through faith so when i want to prophesy you know it really takes faith it takes a lot of faith to hear from god and to say okay yes i believe i know um, this is god speaking to me and i have to put it to work if i'm not operating by faith if i'm like okay whatever you know i will not be able to release that word so i need to have my faith level high and how to keep your faith level high there are different things that you know one can do faith comes by hearing and hearing uh, by the word of god so one of the things that we're doing right now which is to study about the gift of prophecy from the word of god what it's doing for us is it's building our faith right now so getting into the word is the best way to build our faith for anything so if i want to experience healing what should i do get into scriptures on healing you're building your faith in the area of healing now if i want to flow in the prophetic gift same thing study prophecy in scripture study maybe balaam's account how did he prophesy you know he his eyes were wide open he fell uh, on the ground he heard the word of the lord he received the knowledge of the lord so the more you're meditating on something faith is being generated and uh, so you know getting into god's word and building our faith is going to help us in flowing in the gifts of the spirit okay we've run out of time uh, let's go ahead and pray in uh, any case we uh, have a class tomorrow so we will continue from where we have stopped so uh, what i request uh, one of us to please close in prayer please Pastor, can I pray? Yeah, yes, yeah, Shikumar. Please go ahead. Precious Father, we thank you, praise you, honor you, God, for this wonderful morning, O oh God. We praise you, Father God, for Lord Master, for everything what we learned today. We pray that, Father, let these words deeply rooted in our heart and let we grow, then, Lord Master, in the gift of the Holy Spirit and let our gifts be sharpened so that not only we be edified, but Lord Master, others be blessed through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Help us to handle the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your wisdom and in your grace, O oh Father God. We surrender everything into your mighty hand. Bless your servant, O oh Father God. Strengthen her so that she can be used more powerfully in coming days. Thank you, Father God, for everything what you did for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Shri Kumar. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll meet again tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you, Pastor.